All right. You may have caught the story in the Fond du Lac Reporter News paper about uh, Bud Caldwell, who's been on this radio station several times in the past through the uh, community theater in Fond du Lac. I think the story was, it was in the paper on Sunday, I believe. And uh, I don't know. Was no, it Sunday? It wasn't Sunday. Okay. It was a few days ago. Yeah. Bud's wife of more than 50 years, Betty, died a couple of years ago, uh, just short of her 80th birthday, and her family dedicated a park bench to her by the train station in Lakeside Park last year. And, Bud, you had this bench. How far off the Proman Drive is it? It's right on the little train station. It's, oh, okay. It's the last bench in a row of... There's. Two rows of three, and it's the last bench in the back row. Okay. And you visit that bench? Every day. Every day to talk to Betty? I either report or confess, depending on what went on the day before. I do a lot of reporting. Okay. That's <laughs> good to hear. Uh, and you also, you bring a daisy? Yes, I do. And a penny. Tell why. Why is that? When she was a little girl, her favorite song was Pennies from Heaven. And one of our favorite songs was A Daisy a Day by Judd Strunk. And so in good weather, I take a fresh daisy every day and put on the bench, and I put a penny on the plaque. All right. And in this kind of weather, I can't take fresh daisies, so I have a spray of silk daisies on the bench till the weather changes. And it, it, there's not a path to that bench. You 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 would have to trudge through the snow. If there's snow and there's no path shoveled, I last year I tried walking through the snow and I fell down. Oh, and I'm thinking good. here I am laying here and it's winter and there's not much traffic here. Am I going to freeze to death or get up? So I well I got up and uh, went back to my car and I didn't try that anymore till it's come spring. All right. So. Was it recently you went to the park and you noticed that there had been a path shoveled? Very recently. I pulled up there one day and I'm sitting there looking at my gosh, somebody's cleared the path. And it's it's actually the walkway when you want to walk up and ride the train or ride the little merry-go-round or the tilt-a-whirl. And it was shoveled all the way up to the bench. And so I went up there and and reported and visited and then they came back and city truck pulled up across the street and these two young men got out and one stuck his hand out and said hi i'm jared and the other stuck his hand out and says i'm kevin i said i'm bud and told him what i was here and then they said they'd noticed me in the park and they felt that uh, they would like to do this thing for me and so they cleared the path so i could walk up so what's going through your mind at that point my knees about went on me. <laughs> I tell you, I, I I was overwhelmed. I was speechless, which for me is not easy. But they did it, and they said they're going to do it as long as there's snow to clear, and that's where we're at. And you told these young men why you were visiting this bench? I told them why I went there every day. And, and I don't know if their knees went or not, but they, they were, I think, a little affected by that. So they, they didn't have any idea. They just, they saw you every day going to this bench. Mm. And uh, they said, well, you know, it's, and they probably noticed you weren't able to get, the, did you park your car? Right and, on the street. On the street? Yeah, oh, well, sure. And when, it, when when the path, before the path was plowed for you, did you just sit in your car then? Or? Oh, that's all I could do. Cause, right. Um, I'm at an age where I'm not going to be stupid and do it twice and fall in the snow, so I stayed in the car. Oh, that's uh, that's pretty a pretty amazing story. So these two parks workers, their names are Kevin and Jared. Is that yeah, right? Yes. Well, you can ask them. Oh, they're here. Yeah, they're here. They're in the studio. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have uh, Jared Ebert and Kevin Schultz, who are the two Fond du Lac parks workers. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. All right, so you see this guy every you go through the park every day doing your duties as as parks employees. How long had you noticed Bud? Well, we we've noticed him and a lot of our coworkers of course have noticed him 
uh, visit the park daily for two years, as long as he's been doing it. Uh huh. And but, but you had no idea what he was doing. Well, after a while, you you kind of put two and two together. Uh huh. You know, and and we noticed the plaque on the bench and surmised it was was his wife, and he was coming to just to talk to her like anyone would go to a a cemetery and talk to a headstone. Right. So, um, did you notice one day, did you see Bud in his car and he wasn't able to get to the bench? Yeah, we sure yeah. did. Yeah. That, that started to pull at the, the heartstrings, you know, because we knew he visited every day and here there's a snow bank in his way and path is full of snow and he still came and he was still sitting in his car, probably talking in his car. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was pretty, that small act was very powerful. I, I can speak for both of us, I think, for that. Kevin, what, what was your reaction with all of this that was going on and deciding what you were going to do at that point? I just thought it was a nice thing to do to shovel a path for him. Then you went up and you, you met Bud. You shook his yeah. hand. Yep. And when he told you his story, what, what goes through your mind? Kevin's done not much no. for talking. I noticed that. <laughs> it made you feel good, though, didn't yes, you? Yes, very good. Yeah. So uh, both of you, Jared, uh, Kevin, when, when this story appeared in the newspaper, did you think at that point it would become a national story? Well, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. No. This, is, this is far beyond the scope we ever anticipated. Yeah. You know, our, our reward was when we saw Bud using the path. And I'm, I'm glad that he noticed it, and that was very fulfilling. I didn't think it would become what it's become either. No, certainly not. And we're now waiting for a call from Ellen DeGeneres. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. No, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Maybe I'll call down there and, uh, and tell them, hey, you should look at this story. I don't know. We haven't had really any significant snowfall probably since the time you plowed, but are you going to continue to plow? Oh, sure. Yes. Well, we actually yeah. shoveled, uh, was it yesterday? When the heck did it snow? Well, it was the day before yesterday. Yes, yeah. yeah. that's what it was. Because when John came up to do the videoing, uh, it was a prime example of what they did because the path had all been cleared. Mm -hmm. And he was impressed with these guys because he met these guys too, you know. So uh, it, it worked out really well. Yeah, I, you know, I was reading through the story that my wife, uh, Peggy, wrote and talking about uh, the song that... Or Daisy a Day? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It it's, uh, kind of epitomizes our whole life together. Can you sing that? <laughs> I know you did for the for the newspaper. You don't want me to sing the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe a few few lines. I'll try. He remembers the first time he met her. He remembers the first thing she said. He remembers the first time he held her and the night that she came to his bed. He remembers her cute way of singing. Honey, has something gone wrong? He remembers the laugh and the teasing and the reason he wrote her this song. I'll give you a daisy a day, dear. I'll give you a daisy a day. I'll love you until all the rivers run still and the four winds we know blow away. There's two more verses to this, so it goes on. But the last one is, he walks down the street in the evening, and he walks by the old candy store, and I somehow believe he's believing, he's holding her hand like before her, so he feels all her love walking with him, and he smiles at the things she might say, then the old man walks up to the hilltop and gives her a daisy a day. And then the chorus is after that. So that's it. Betty was a remarkable woman. She never let me down.
Bud Caldwell. Uh, we greatly appreciate you uh, joining us this morning, Jared Ebert and Kevin Schultz, uh, both Fond du Lac Parks employees. Um, again, thanks for coming in and thanks, Greg. You're, you're Pleasure welcome. having you on the show. Sure, you're welcome.